Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in Olympiad workout series and I have brought forward to you a question from electromagnetic induction on the subtopic of superconductors. Slightly less discussed topic but very very important for both JE Advanced and Olympiads. And uh, so the question uh, I have shared already in the community post. So for those who are new to this channel and missed that particular post, I would request you to pause the video here, go through the question. Uh, there are two parts of it. One is the evaluation and second one is a theory part where you're supposed to answer uh, uh, whether the spring is going to get compressed or elongated. So I just want to make sure that you read it on your own and then come back to the explanation. So I'm going ahead with the formal wording and thereby the concept and the solution. And please do wait till the end of the video because I'm going to give you a practice problem on the concept of the superconductors. Okay, so here we go. A superconducting uniform spring has n turns of radius r relaxed length L and the spring constant K. The ends of the spring are connected by a wire and a small steady current capital I is made to flow through the spring. Due to this, the spring deforms by a small value E in a new equilibrium state. Okay, right. So because of this, the new equilibrium state is achieved and the spring is going to achieve a new length. Okay, so the deformation could be a compression or elongation. So that you have to answer and also the value of that uh, deformation and assuming that the current was small. Okay, so that's the condition. So here we go. First of all, we should understand at the JE advanced and the school Olympiads levels, what is the properties of the superconductors? Okay, so actual concepts of superconductors are covered under the topic of Meissner effect and it requires quantum mechanics. Okay, so we are not going to go into details of it. We'll just take the gist of the requirement that is uh, necessary for the problem solving here. Okay, so the first and foremost property that you need to understand is that superconductor under that condition would be considered as a perfect electrical conductor and a perfect diamagnet. Okay, so let's go one by one. What is meant by perfect conductor? Its resistance is supposedly equal to zero. And therefore, during any variations of the current in that loop, okay, we are talking about superconducting loop, thin loop, okay, right. The value of the flux change should be zero. Okay, right. Why is that so? Imagine the flux change was not zero, then the induced EMF, right, would be not equal to zero, right. And then the current actually uh, would tend to infinity with R equal to zero. Okay, so otherwise I said, right? So imagine induced EMF was not zero, then current will tend to infinity because R is already zero. So because R is zero, EMF also should tend to zero so that the ratio of this two by Ohm's law should develop a current which is finite and not infinite. And for all of this, the value of EMF tends to zero and hence there should not be any flux change. So that's the thumb rule whenever any perfect conductor is given. And please understand there are other perfect conductors which are not superconductors. So this particular point, you can use it for any perfect conductor condition of which superconductor is a special case. Okay. An extra point for superconductor, which we may not use in this problem, but will be useful for other magnetism problems is that it is a perfect diamagnet. Okay, any perfect diamagnet will always have B equal to zero in the material volume. So if this conducting loop itself has a cross-sectional area in that volume, the magnetic field will become zero. It will expel all the magnetic field lines. Diamagnets hate magnetic field lines. Okay, so there is a difference. Please understand the flux here that we are calculating is within the loop right, the empty space of the inside of the loop, whereas this B that I'm talking about is in the material volume. So that's the difference. Okay, so this property right now is not used in this problem situation. It's the second one that I ticked here, which would be used uh, in most of our JE advanced problems of superconductors. Okay, so the third one, uh, this B equal to zero understanding would be coming from Meissner effect. Okay. Right. Now, estimating the value of the current as a function of L. Remember, the current is passed through this particular solenoid or this spring, as he is calling it, uh, of relaxed length L. But this L is going to change once the current actually is going to pass through. Now, you should realize that there are many ways of solving this. I'm using an energy method because it's easier. Uh, it will take out all those uh, difficult calculations pertaining to force. Finally, I'll equate the force, but I'll calculate it through energy. 
okay similar to the logic where, which we used in capacitors also okay so the energy that is stored because of the magnetic field volume inside that particular solenoid would be nothing but b square by 2 mu naught which is the energy density function multiplied by the volume of this inside structure okay so what is the magnetic field inside a solenoid assuming this is a very small current and this is large number of turns you could calculate it as mu naught into small n which is number per unit length and that i have written as capital n divided by l into i which is the current flowing through whole square divided by 2 mu naught volume i have written cylindrical volume of pi r square l so I, if i manipulate all the important uh, things which are constant it comes out with this green colored stuff and the variables are i square and l why i say variables once the current actually passes through this this value of current and l could change okay so if you misread this e equation there is a misconception among students whenever they see this particular expression that uh, remember whenever anything is left on its own it tries to achieve the lower energy state okay lower energy state so students estimate u should be lower over a period of time therefore they think that the value of l which is in the denominator should increase and therefore um, this spring has to elongate i got some of the comments also when i posted this question in that manner that the spring is going to elongate which is wrong Re remember u has to reduce but that need not happen when l is reduced okay right oh, sorry l is increased uh, l can reduce with current also remaining actually um, um, it's not remaining it will change in this particular scenario the reason for that you should realize that it will compress because the currents which are flowing in this are parallel currents right you you could see the um, loop one loop two loop three they are all going to behave like parallel currents and we all know parallel currents actually are going to attract so there will be a compression then how to explain that the energy is going to reduce upon compression because l is decreasing u also has to decrease the idea Idea lies in that superconducting uh, idea that I talked in the previous slide. This capital I need not be remaining constant. Okay, so the current that flows will be self-adjust because of the induction that is going to take place. It is the flux that remains constant. Okay, so the value of flux throughout this solenoid can be written as n into b into area, where n is the number of turns. B we already discussed into area of cross section that should be constant. And if you again remove all the constants out, you realize this value of i by l is a constant. Okay, so since I by L is a constant and L reduces, I actually is going to reduce. So the reduction in L is overridden by the reduction in capital I. Capital I's reduction is even more and therefore the energy state reduces. Okay, so which means you should realize that the magnetic force of compression for this function U should be written as dou U by dou L. That should give rise to this, this kind of a relation. Okay, so dou U by dou L, this is the expression that you're going to get. I've assumed that the value of capital I, even though it changes, is this very small variation. This is where the small value has been utilized. Please understand why I did not differentiate current I. If I were to use that, then I, I could have written this as I is equal to K times L, substituted I is equal to K times L here, Okay, right. This would become a proportional to L and again, I will get the same constant force. So here I have been using some trick that uh, the simple I by L is a constant. I could replace I and L with a proportionality constant and that's why this is a constant force. So over a period of time, this small variations, this I will be a new value of I, L will be a new value of L, but the ratio will remain constant. That's why I'm able to write this expression directly. It might appear as if I have directly differentiated and kept I constant, but that is I by L that I have kept constant. Okay, right. I hope that is fine. And then what is whatever the value of the force that I got, compressive one, that I should be able to equate it to the Hooke's law force mechanically that would support this one. And E is compression, we already saw, and the value of E finally comes out to be this. It's an approximation under the uh, idea that capital I is very small. Okay, right. So I hope you like this particular problem. This is the practice problem that I was trying to talk about. I picked from Irido. I'll solve this one in the next Irido Select Solutions series question. And if you type the solution for this on the internet is available, but I'm not satisfied with the solution. There is some conceptual issue with the way the solution is actually given. It gives you a correct answer, but it uh, it it doesn't do it in a proper stepwise manner. So when you are solving this problem, right? So please make sure, uh, apart from the torque method that you are going to use to solve for the first and second one, also try to answer these questions, uh, which will ensure that your concept becomes even more clearer. So can you solve it using energy method? without invoking the torque? 
that's the first one and while writing the energy method you will be writing energy that is involved in the system as this particular function and which m is the mutual inductance between the uh, loop that he's talking about and the magnetic field of the external agents okay so those two interactive m term will be there this is called interaction energy term so what happens to this m while this particular work is being performed not only that what's the work done by the battery in the loop this superconducting loop may have a battery which will or may or may not perform the work that also you should ascertain when he says work performed he's talking about work performed by the external mechanical agent who is turning it or the battery or both if you can answer these kind of in, in, uh, intricate questions then your concept also becomes better so i'll be trying to solve uh, using this kind of method and not the one that is available on the internet i hope you'll be looking forward to that okay so um, in case you have liked this olympiad workout series please do check out the other playlists also all the links of these playlists are in the description below each one of them you try to play two or three videos every day to try to finish the 150 above videos that i have produced each one i guarantee you will teach you something or the other and in a new perspective even if you know the solution uh, i would suggest you go through it it will not harm you at, at all okay so please do like this video and uh, to share it with your peers and um, others in the telegram and whatsapp group and help me get more subscribers to my channel uh, thanks for all the support and love that you have been showing till now and i hope it remains the same in the near future because i am going to promise from my end the quality is going to be maintained as it is right thank you and see you in the next video